Hello again, sisters and brothers. Welcome to session number 29 of our 40 Sessions with James devotion series. Good to have you guys along with us. Uh, for this se session, we're going to take a look at James chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. James chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. If you've missed any of our previous 28 sessions, they're all saved right here on the Facebook page, also saved over on my YouTube channel. If you ever have any difficulty finding any of it, uh, do let me know. Be more than happy to try to point you in the right direction. Uh, one thing you may have noticed from the last session, and I hope it came out uh, on Facebook. I don't know if it would have transferred over to YouTube or not, but uh, I added the uh, closed captioning at the bottom of it. I didn't know if that might make it easier to understand some of the, some of the things that I say. I do have a tendency sometimes to mumble. I do speak at times with somewhat of a southern twang. Uh, if you find that helpful or find this helpful, uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you find it to be a distraction, let me know that as well, and I'll stop doing it. Uh, but in any event, uh, we'll do the, the captions, or at least try to do the captions again for this session. If it helps you, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know, um, and we can either continue doing it or stop doing it, whichever you guys prefer. Again, tonight we're taking a look at uh, chapter, I'm sorry, session four, nine through 10. I said tonight, of course, I mean this morning. Chapter four, verses nine through 10. Here's what our friend James has for us. He writes this. <clears throat> he says, Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. It's the word of God for you and I, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Well, here's what our devotion writer has for us for this session. He writes this. In his epistle, which again is just another word for letter, but in his epistle, James has demonstrated to us why we need to repent our sin. Sometimes, however, the true meaning of repentance is lost on us. We view repentance as nothing more than a password that gets us out of trouble with God. But repentance is not merely saying the right words with our mouths, as if God could be fooled by a false confession. Rather, Repentance is the faithful response to the preaching of God's law. To put it another way, repentance is what happens when we believe what God says about us is true, that we are sinners. Repentance isn't something we kind of conjure up inside of ourselves. We don't just try to make ourselves feel bad. No, Repentance is what happens when we hear about God's anger toward sin and worse, his wrath toward faithless sinners. The preaching of the law, that is God's will for how his creatures should live, is like being told by your doctor that you have cancer. You know your body should be healthy, but it isn't. Such news produces fear and response. What can I do? What's next? Thank God we live in a day and age where there are many treatments for cancer and the doctor will typically have a plan to move forward. Things aren't so helpful or hopeful when it comes to the law of God. Under the proclamation of the law, we have no hope. We have no path forward. The law kills us. It leaves us dead. The law tells us that God loves the righteous and hates the wicked. The wicked will suffer his wrath. The law diagnoses us with wickedness and leaves us for dead. Such news causes grief, mourning, and wailing. Laughter turns to mourning and joy to gloom. It causes us to despair of all righteousness inside of ourselves. We are humbled. We are killed. Not even our repentance can save us now. But God is not finished talking. By itself, the law that leaves us without hope is not the last word. Christ is. When we find ourselves in despair under God's law, we cry out for mercy, and God responds by being born of a virgin. In fact, it was Mary who sang, He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Jesus comes to fulfill what the law demands of us, 
both its commands and its consequences. He lives it out perfectly and yet dies under its condemnation. This death we sinners deserved. He was born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law. That's Paul's letter to the Galatians chapter 4 verses 4 through 5. The law kills us and leaves us with no hope, nowhere to turn. But God turns towards us in Christ Jesus and removes the condemnation of the law, giving us new life. He turns away from sin. Jesus repents in our place. All that God demands of us in the law is given to us in Christ. He lifts us up. Let us pray. I repent, dear God, for all my sins with which I have offended you. I deserve your wrath and condemnation. I hear your will and I am brought low and made humble. Forgive me for the sake of your son, Jesus, who was made low to the point of death on the cross. I thank you that his blood was shed for me. I pray that your law and gospel daily fill my ears so I have a life of repentance and rejoicing. Amen. So how do we respond to this particular devotion? Well, this one I think is an interesting one. It says to go back and look again at the Ten Commandments. If you remember a few sessions ago, we talked about picking one or two, maybe memorizing them and thinking about them, discerning, praying on them. But it says go back through and write down whatever sins are weighing heavy on you and bring it to church on Sunday. And then on Sunday, when I pronounce the absolution over everyone, when I say in the name of Christ Jesus, you are forgiven, then take those sins you've written down and simply tear them up. Interesting. Yep. Well, as we bring this session to a close, friends, I want you to receive this word of grace. The Lord Jesus has called you to repent. Your repentance, however, is never perfect enough to meet his righteousness or to merit his forgiveness. So, he turned away from all sin and temptation for you. Jesus, that is. And what is more, he has now given you credit for his faithfulness. My friend, you are forgiven, even for your flimsy repentance. All right, friends, that brings this session to a close. Until you and I meet again, God bless and take care.